It's always good to see your comments on my videos. They give me an understanding of your experience of the changing landscape we are all a part of. Whether that is about you having started the transition, or why you are avoiding doing so. Sometimes the comments are most unexpected and pique my interest. Could I be missing something? Today's video was triggered by just such a comment, which was posted on my Renault Zoe 12 month ownership review video. That comment said that they had found the Zoe to be extremely inefficient on AC charging. Could that be the case? I wasn't sure. So in today's video, I will talk you through what I did to test that hypothesis. How efficient is the Zoe when AC charging? The comment triggering today's video was from someone in Germany who charged their Zoe from their solar photovoltaic setup. They were concerned about what happened. In that comment, Captain Nutzlus said, the Zoe is one of the worst EVs. It has AC charging losses around 22%. Imagine spilling a quarter of your fuel every time. Well, a comment like that is only going to spark my interest. 22% charging losses, could that really be true? If it is, that is terrible. So I asked a few more questions about the source of the information. It turned out that they have a solar PV system with battery storage that allows them to charge their cars off grid. And they had been given a Zoe ZE40 with its 41 kilowatt hour battery as a courtesy car while having their Dacia Spring serviced. They charged it off the solar system, setting the charge point to output eight amps to limit the draw on the system and set it running for 10 hours. They reckoned feeding two kilowatts to the car for 10 hours would result in an increase in the battery level of 50%, but they saw that it only increased by 37%, which seemed to suggest a very, for a very poor charging efficiency. Now there is one inaccuracy in this maths. At the 230 volt line voltage that they have in Germany, with an eight amp charging limit, they were not feeding two kilowatts to the car, but 1.84 maximum. So they should only have expected a gain of 18.4 kilowatt hours, or 44% of the battery capacity, not the 20 kilowatt hours they expected and the 50% therefore. Even so, getting only 37% rather than the 44% we would have predicted suggests that something isn't right. There does seem to be a lot of energy being lost along the way. That made me wonder if my Zoe is as inefficient as theirs seem to be, and I wanted to check that for myself. So that's exactly what I did. I ran the car down to 5%, and then put it on charge, wanting to charge to 85%, therefore adding 80% of the battery capacity. The two reasons for charging this way were firstly that adding a large percentage should reduce the inaccuracy caused by the fact that we don't have decimal places in the uh, display. Secondly, charging to 100% triggers a charge levelling process that both slows charging and might also take a bit more energy, possibly skewing the results. So charging 5% to 85% on a 7 kilowatt charger should result in a fairly constant power charge, giving us more ways to measure and sense check the results. According to the Zoe app, charging was split into four sessions. It started at 0.31 hours and finished at 0.657 hours with two breaks. The first stop was at 0.45 hours for a few seconds, which was me changing the charging schedule to be continuous, rather than stopping and starting to suit the grid, which is the default behaviour of my charge point. I felt that continuous charging was important to give us better data. And that's why the second stop for 10 minutes between 0.535 and 0.545 was all the more unexpected. But that suggests a total charge time of six hours and 16 minutes. We can also see that the car stopped 1% early at 84%. Unfortunately, I had been a little bit too clever. 
I had purposely set it to stop at 84% because it normally overshoots by 1% on my charge point. I think that's due to caching in the API, but that meant I had added 79% indicated. The Zoe app also shows how much energy was added, which we can total up across the four sessions to be 38.3 kilowatt hours. But I don't know exactly what that means. Which side of the charger is that? Either way, it seems a bit off. 38.3 kilowatt hours of a 52 kilowatt hour battery is only 73.7%, so that doesn't seem enough for either measurement before or after. We're expecting for more like 41 kilowatt hours to be added to achieve a 79% charge. So I'm not sure I trust that figure from the app. However, I also get a reading from my charge point app and that's what I actually get build based on. So that seems likely to be more accurate. That shows it fed 42.4 kilowatt hours of energy to the car. 79% of a 52 kilowatt hour usable battery is 41.08 kilowatt hours. So we can calculate the efficiency from these two figures. We lost 1.32 kilowatt hours of the 42.4 kilowatt hours fed to the car, or just over 3.1%, making our charging efficiency 96.9%. That's surprisingly good to the point where I wonder whether that is really accurate. We can double check it based on the time taken. We know that it charged for 6 hours 16 minutes, in other words 376 minutes. Delivering 42.4 kilowatt hours should take 343.8 minutes at 7.4 kilowatts, the maximum charge current my charge point can deliver. However, from the OMI app, we can see that it was delivering 7.1 kilowatts for some of the time, dropping to 7.0 kilowatts later on in the session. And at that speed, it should take more like 358 to 363 minutes. So the difference between the expected and actual time as a function of the expected time gives us efficiency figures we can use to sense check what we measured. And they seem to correlate very well. Therefore, I'm pretty confident that I am getting just under 97% efficiency when AC charging. So why the big discrepancy between what my viewer saw and what I saw? Well, there is a difference between the tests, and that's the charging speed. My viewer was doing level 1 charging, whereas I was doing level 2 charging. Could that be the difference? Well, I didn't have a level one charger at that time, having passed it on to a new EV owner in need. So I've been keeping an eye on eBay to pick something up for reasonable money. And this week I finally managed to get hold of one. So I've been able to repeat the test with that. The setup for experiment two was very similar to the first. I made a slight mistake and charged from 6% to 84% having forgotten that the screenshot I took on the first test was a little bit late, but we can account for that in the maths. This time I don't get the help of my OMI app to measure the energy fed to the car, so I had to use a power meter I own to measure energy usage instead. Fortunately it's a reasonable quality one, made by Brennenstuhl, so I think it should be fairly accurate. The results of the test were very interesting. The power meter showed that the current draw was about 9.4 amps at the start of the test and 9.3 at the end, so it stayed pretty consistent. The time taken to reach 84% was 21 hours 31 minutes, and the total energy usage this time was 45.1 kilowatt hours. That's getting on for 3 kilowatt hours more than the 42.4 kilowatt hours we used when level 2 charging. Crunching the numbers using that energy usage shows an efficiency of 90%. So it appears from my data that the Zoe ZE50 is less efficient when level 1 charging than when level 2 charging. That's worth knowing. I want to take one quick diversion at this point to mention power factor. 
The Pren and Stuhl power meter I'm using measures power factor and takes that into account when determining power. It's quite small, but we can see here that the cos phi figure is shown on the right hand side of the current measurement screen. Here we can see that the Zoe is achieving a power factor of 0.95, which is pretty good. It has active correction to achieve this figure. There's a video available in which someone discusses the patent application for the chameleon charger that the Zoe uses. In that video, they discuss how the power factor correction is achieved. It's a pretty heavyweight description and not one I would recommend for the casual viewer, but I'll put a link to it in the description in case you are interested in knowing more. The point of mentioning power factor here is in case any of you were wondering if the energy measurement might not be taking power factor into consideration and might account for some of the discrepancy we are seeing. In fact, it's the power factor that explains why the current and voltage do not directly correlate with the power that the meter shows. The meter is displaying real power and uses that in total energy consumption as well. Real power is what we pay for in a domestic setting. So it's a reasonable way to measure energy usage as it matters to us. It's only in commercial environments that power factor charges are applied and a power factor of 0.95 is within the acceptable limits anyway. But back to the question in hand. We have seen that the charging efficiency of the Zoe is lower when charging at less than full speed, but it's not as bad as my viewer witnessed. Why might that be? Well, there is one more variable that might come into play. They were using a Zoe ZE40, and there were two variants of the ZE40. When the Zoe originally launched, it offered a 43 kilowatt maximum AC charging rate. Later in its life, a second variant became available using a more efficient motor, but only offering a 22 kilowatt maximum charge rate. The difference in the charge rate happened because the Zoe uses its motor windings as part of the charging circuit. That's a clever trick that the Renault engineers used to save both weight and money. But the new motor presumably had lower inductance, so with this new motor, Renault could not offer as fast a charging system for the same money. The two motor variants, known as Q and R, were carried into the ZE40 when it was released both being available together until March 2018, and therefore we don't know which my viewer had use of. What my tests show is that charging at less than the maximum speed for a single phase is less efficient than at full speed, and perhaps that was even more true for a car that could charge at 43 kilowatts. Charging a car with a Q motor, the Q90, at just 1.8 kilowatts might have been even less efficient than I have seen in my tests and might explain the results they experienced. Now, I can't say for sure what my viewer saw. I can't replicate exactly the same conditions. But the good news is that the ZE50 seems to be more efficient than they witnessed, especially when using level two charging, which seems more efficient than level one charging. This is perhaps an additional reason for fitting a level two charger at home if you can. Not only is it slightly safer as a level two charger can be hardwired and removing the extra connector avoids the potential for it becoming faulty and overheating, but it might also be a bit more efficient to run a car's onboard charger at or near its full operational potential. Although this is of course only one test on only one car. Thanks very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. What's your experience of charging the ZE50 and the Zoe's in general? Do you have any figures that you could share in the comments? If you've liked the video, it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that you've enjoyed it and YouTube may promote it to others based upon that. And of course, click subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.